Welcome back to the room. I am your magical wizard, and today we're messing around with lube. Just like you, I was wondering about lube one day, so I did what any other person would. I googled it, clicked on a few key websites for research. After a few hours of uh, stroking my curiosity, I switched my tactile from boredom. I probably should have mentioned before that story. Uh, I'm talking about custom keyboards and the enthusiast community that goes along with that. Oh, sh As I was trying to say, I found myself on a subreddit page and through different various websites when I discovered this guy. And he really sparked the curiosity inside of me about keyboards. And so I started researching how much they would cost a lot. You know, it's not like COVID's not to blame for people not having jobs or money right now. So we're doing the next best thing and we're going to take my Logitech keyboard. We're, we're going to disassemble it, lube all the switches, solder the keyboard back together and hope and pray I did it all correctly. So if you're watching this video, uh, if anything, please share it, like it, you know, I, I know it's a small inconvenience, maybe not, maybe it's a big inconvenience, but I'm seriously potentially killing my only keyboard right now. And all I got to say is, come on, I have an idea. Ugh, this is my idea. So what I did was I looked online and disguise, 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 disguise myself. No, I decided that it would be best to practice on a really cheap older keyboard. Ironically, this is a Black Widow and I got it for like 25, 30 bucks. So with my gas money gone, let's, uh, let's take this apart and practice soldering, desoldering on this Future Michael here. I'm actually just want to kind of have a chat about my thoughts and my experience about taking apart this keyboard or this practice board and just kind of tell you guys that it was a freaking nightmare. After ripping it apart and cleaning it, I discovered that the owner of this keyboard or the previous owner of the keyboard had dogs and cats and I'm allergic to dander. I love animals, but I was having some major bad allergies to this board. So I had to clean it off with rubbing alcohol and sanitization. Afterwards, when I started desoldering the board for practice, it just wasn't working. Nothing I would do. I even at one point like took two soldering irons trying to get this wick stuff to work. Well, luckily my sister came over later and her and her boyfriend, uh, he solder stuff. So he had this uh, suction pump thing, which I thought would do worse. So I didn't buy one. Turned out to be the best thing ever. And ironically, after he uh, gave me one later in the day, I already bought one from Amazon and both of them ended up being good for their own kind of thing. I don't know why, but one of them would work better on the black board before you and the, the one I got worked better on the green board and it was kind of nutty, but maybe it was because one of them had a smaller end and the other one had a bigger, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, let's get back in the video. Hopefully everybody is enjoying it so far. And for the most part, I'm doing great. And oh, one more thing. I might be doing video editing for somewhat of a side gig here pretty soon. So that will be fun. And we have more things to talk about there. But in the meantime, I'm letting past Michael take over. All right, so the scary thing's about to happen. I have gotten enough experience with ripping out the LEDs and the switches from the board, and I'm probably gonna trigger a ton of people out there with how I've been doing this. However, I am pretty confident that I am able to successfully remove the switches and the LEDs without breaking them for the most part. So let's, uh, let's do this really, really, really scary thing. <laughs> it's gonna die. Uh, it's the point of no return.
Future Michael here. I just want to touch on basis before we get to the end of the video that this entire project has been a learning experience unto itself, not just about desoldering and resoldering, but the overall quality and the time the time that is placed into making a keyboard especially custom keyboards the people out there that are sitting there lubing switches every day deserve to absolutely be paid for their hard work and i fully understand now why custom keyboards if specifically mechanical keyboards with lubed switches are so expensive because this keyboard in total probably took me about 19 hours to complete in three or so three days and i have no idea what i'm doing this was the first time i've taken apart a keyboard desoldered a keyboard and i did it twice technically because over here we were working on the old school black widow keyboard and they had the leds in on their own so i would have to desolder the led and desolder the switch to get the switch out because the led ran through the switch and from that experience alone, I can absolutely see why I will never personally take apart a keyboard to desolder it and lube switches again. If I am to buy any new keyboard and to lube the switches, I'm going to buy all the parts and do it and do it myself that way. Because I have a feeling a majority of the time I spent was desoldering because there would be there's i don't know how to describe it but the pads with holes there for the switch switches to go through you have to suck out all the solder and first i was trying the copper wire wick from the black it, it was crap i ripped off pads i i could not get it to work and even when i was taking two soldering irons and like touching them together to get them hotter it was still not doing a fantastic job. A couple of them, it just sucked it right up. And other times I couldn't even get the, the, uh, the solder to reflow. So when I got the sucker tool, I turned the temperatures up like really hot on the, uh, on the soldering iron. And when I touched it, it would instantly flow and I would suck it up and I was getting the best yield from that. However, when I went to the G513, I turned it down to about 650, I think 500 Fahrenheit because I didn't want to accidentally burn or rip off a pad. I thought I did at one point and I, I, I almost freaked out, but it wasn't a pad. It was just the rest of the solder. And I discovered even though, even though I was lower temperatures, sometimes the solder wouldn't reflow until I either turned it up slightly or let's sit with some new solder. So a lot of the switches on the G513 got desoldered and resoldered like three or four times to get all the solder out because, um, something I didn't realize when I started this project was it would be so difficult to desolder a board. I was thinking like, Oh, this is going to be easy. No, all my time was spent into desoldering. And the next thing on the list, the thing that that boggled my mind on how hard it was, my fingers still hurt. This is two days ago that I finished. So it's, yeah, been two day, two and a half days now. My fingertips on my thumbs and all my fingers hurt. Like hurt.